Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming. Our Mass is a special Mass for the Ukraine. Please pray with me, prepare to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God have you, come we pray. And if you go, the of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell some And all the evil spirits who crowd about the world. Please rise and greet all of our celebrants and welcome back Knights of Columbus as we sing our hymn number 792 as we gather at your table, hymn number 792. Creator of the world, under whose governance 
the design of all the ages unfolds. Be attentive, we pray, to our petitions, and grant to our times tranquility and peace, that we may exalt with unceasing joy in praise of your great mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Beloved, who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show his works by a good life, in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Wisdom of this kind does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where if jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to God. Brothers and sisters, Father Bill asked me, I forget if it was last week or the week before, I don't even remember now. He uh, said, Well, since you've got relatives over in Ukraine, why don't you say a few words? Uh, yeah, I've got relatives over there, but I haven't heard anything in the last two weeks. I talked with them about two weeks ago, and now silence. So, all I can say there is I don't know. I don't know. 
And in fact, as I have been watching some of the snippets, or whatever you want to call it, from Ukraine, uh, I have to admit, my Ukrainian has gotten better over the last few weeks. Uh, <clears throat> but I kept hearing a phrase over and over and over and over again. Yana's night, Yana's night. I don't know. I don't know. And you know, that seems to have become the theme for my life this year. I don't know. You know, we're gathering to pray for Ukraine. Uh, I think we need to pray for Russia too. Uh, especially the people. Uh, and it would seem a lot of, if you want to say, a lot of the Russian soldiers too. You know, because it would seem they went into the whole situation not even knowing where they were going. So maybe that theme of I don't know can apply to many people, many different places, maybe even the world. You know, I've always said that Lent is not all about our agenda. It's not about our agenda. But you know, we like to get ready for Lent and we like to plan our Lent and we put our own agendas together. Do we not? You know, I'm going to do this for Lent, I'm going to do that for Lent. We have a lot of ideas. Now for us here in northeastern Pennsylvania, many times we have a lot of ideas and then we get hit with snow and ice. Brings everything to a halt. Huh. You know, it's kind of like oh, we plan this, we plan that, we plan that, and oh, we can't. We can't even get out. So we like to make plans. In other words, we like to be prepared. We like to be prepared. And that's just another way of putting that we like to be in control. We like to be in control. We like to be in control of ourselves. And we like to be in control of everything else around us too. But you know, I think you know, I say, Lent is not about our agenda, but it's about God's agenda. It's about God's agenda for us. If we open ourselves, if we let go long enough of our own agendas, our own plans, And we just let ourselves be touched by the world around us. Well, that means we have to open our eyes, to open our ears, got to listen. We've got to open our hearts. You know, that last phrase of the gospel, that we're to be perfect as God is perfect. Well, that's the way this translation renders it. But another translation renders it, we have to be compassionate 
as God is compassionate. And I think that's another way of saying we have to feel with our hearts. We have to feel. My brothers and sisters, we have gathered here to pray, as I said, for Ukraine. We've, got, we've praying for Russia. We're praying for a lot of people. You know, we have a lot of people over there right now from all over the world that are offering their time, their talents, whatever they can help and bring to the situation. One of our friars is presently stationed on the Polish border helping with the immigrants. But I think we also gather to pray not only for Ukraine, but for the world. You know, Ukraine has our attention right now. You know, most of our attention is going there. But the brokenness, the violence, the difficulty is around the world. It's around the world. You know? Socially, politically, economically, whatever, you know, that, that list could go on and on and on. COVID, you know, we've come through the last two years. And now there's other stuff going on. To those who dwell in darkness, a light has shone. Those words of Isaiah, you know, a world in darkness it was then, maybe it's still today, there's darkness. Tradition that reading from Isaiah is part of our vestments for Christmas Eve. It's, it's, it's part of our preparation for Christmas. That in the darkness there is light. And that light is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And in the end, we proclaim that he has risen from the dead. <coughs> Which is a way of saying that the darkness in the world, the suffering in the world, the death in the world, the sin in the world, the brokenness in the world, the violence in the world, does not have the final word. But the final word is that Christ has risen from the dead and brings life in and through death and suffering and brokenness. And so we gather as a people of faith. In the end, it is the work of God. It is the grace of God. It is the love of God touching.
our world and each and every one of us. Maybe the ultimate question that we need to ask ourselves is what is God doing with me during this night? What is God doing? And are we able to recognize and to respond? to that blessing and to that very infusion of the Spirit of God within us and among us. And so we pray. We pray for peace. We pray for justice. We pray for a world constantly being touched by that grace and love of God. May God continue to walk with us, <clears throat> guide us, direct us, With all our heart and mind, let us pray to the Lord. Let us lay our requests before Him, saying, Hear our prayer. For our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Alfred, and the priests and deacons who serve the Church of Allentown, that through their ministry they may bring healing and peace to all who suffer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the Ukrainian people in this time of conflict, May God's grace sustain and strengthen them and keep them from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. 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 For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and the spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. 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 For innocent people in Ukraine and around the world, harmed by violence or instability, may God bless them and console them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for human for the humanitarian efforts to assist the refugees of Russia's aggression, especially the Knights of Columbus. May the generosity of concerned Christians and the people of goodwill continue to aid those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for Father Jonathan Kalish. Supreme Chaplain of the Knights of Columbus, and others like him, who are presently in Poland assisting the refugees, we pray to the Lord. That the efforts of the Knights of Columbus give witness and bear fruit of living a life worthy of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For the intercession of Blessed John and the Gibney, to come to the aid of all in need, we pray to the Lord. The Lord that our prayers for the cause of canonization of Father John McGivney enable him to serve the church in the hierarchy of the saints, we pray to the Lord. The Lord for all deceased members of the Schuylkill Assembly and each of the councils in Schuylkill County, we pray to the Lord. Lord, God, our Heavenly Father, we lift up to you these our prayers 
We ask you to hear and answer them and direct us by your holy grace. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen.
therefore, Almighty Father, be blessed through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O oh Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts, and the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life, to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Day one, the Founder's family of faith. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. The intention for the domestic church, the church of the home, seedbed of love and vocation. Virtue, openness to God's will. Father McGinley memorialed the late Pope's message on the domestic church. Family become what you are. Formed and blessed by God, the family is the place where parents are privileged to bring forth children and serve as the first examples of human love, unity, and fraternity amid daily joys, sacrifices, and suffering. The McGivney family knew the grace of cooperating with God's will, bringing 13 children into the world as well as the grief that came 
when six of those children died as infants. Patrick and Mary left Ireland's potato famine for America and were married in Waterbury, Connecticut. The first child, Michael Joseph, was born August the 12th, 1852, and baptized a week later. He took on family responsibility early, watching over his younger siblings, earning honors in school, graduating at age 13, and then joining his father in factory work. Though not rich in material goods, the life of this family abounded in grace, and Michael learned discipline, compassion, and the rough and tumble fraternal charity that comes naturally in a large family. The McGinnis also received from God the great gift of vocations, as Michael's younger brothers, Patrick and John, joined him in the priesthood. Novena to the Blessed Michael McGinley. Prayer for the canonization of Blessed Michael McGinley. God our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGinley, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous services of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, May we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the Church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love, so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify, Blessed Michael McGinley, on earth, according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor that we now present. We present the, the prayers that our Mike, Father Michael McGinley may be canonized. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Our daily prayers, petitions, for many graces to come through the intercession of Father Michael McGinley, that by his example of virtue, we may be inspired to grant, may be inspired to put our faith into action for the good of our families, parishes, and communities. Grant our prayer through the Lord, through the intercession of my Lord. For the personal petitions of those who pray this novena, and for a miracle from God that will lead to the canonization of Father McGinley. Grant our prayer, Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Michael. The second petition, for a deeper appreciation of the importance of family life, that our domestic church may serve as a model of faith, hope, and charity. Grant our prayer, Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Michael. For the holy marriages founded on God's love, that husbands and wives may have the grace to generously accept the gift of new life. Grant our prayer Please join with us in Let There Be Peace on Earth.
Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank my senior for inviting us here. I thank my brother priest who come celebrating this Mass tonight. To the Knights of Columbus for your presence and leader, leadership tonight as well. We're grateful. And to you, the people who've come from across Schuylkill County, to be here tonight to do something really important. Pray for one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth with the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Number 392 in these days of Lenten Journey. 